The Felt Sense Prayer. The author is unknown, but is thought to be a Chinese doctor. I am the pain in your head, the knot in your stomach, the unspoken grief in your smile. I am your high blood sugar, your elevated blood pressure, your fear of challenge, your lack of trust. I am your hot flashes, your cold hands and feet, your agitation and your fatigue. I am your shortness of breath, your fragile low back, the cramp in your neck, the despair in your sigh. I am the pressure in your heart, the pain down your arm, your bloated abdomen, your constant hunger. I am where you hurt, the fear that persists, your sadness of dreams unfulfilled. I am your symptoms, the causes of your concern, the signs of imbalance, your condition of dis-ease. You tend to disown me, suppress me, ignore me, inflate me, coddle me, condemn me. I'm not coming forth for myself, as I'm not separate from all that is you. I come to garner your attention, to enjoin your embrace so I can reveal my secrets. I have only your best interests at heart as I seek health and wholeness by simply announcing myself. You usually want me to go away immediately, to disappear, to slink back into obscurity. You mostly are irritated or frightened and many times shocked by my arrival. From this stance, you medicate in order to eradicate me. Ignoring me, not exploring me, is your preferred response. More times than not, I'm the only the most recent notes of a long symphony, the most evident branches of roots that have been challenged for seasons. That's the first half of the felt sense prayer. So many of us do take these precious bodies of ours for granted, don't we? this vehicle we have to go through life. We ignore or suppress our bodies. We get angry and frustrated with them when they don't work how we want them to. We look at them with distaste when we're not the shape or size we wanna be. We work them hard without listening to the impact. Until we get sick or injured, or lose the use or function of a body part, it's easy to overlook or take this extraordinary machine that we inhabit for granted. But our bodies are actually in constant dialogue with us. If only we would choose to listen. Now some religious teachings say that the body is the source of temptation and sin, encouraging people to fear or rid themselves of their natural sensations and instincts to deny the connection to their bodies. I'm so glad that we as Unitarian Universalists don't seem to demonize our bodies, even if we sometimes ignore, neglect, or abuse them. <laughs> Speaking of that, who here is comfort eating right now? I know that I am. Raise your hand if you are. Maybe you can see each other. Or maybe type in the chat box what kinds of foods you are eating for comfort. For me, it's all kinds of nuts and fatty foods that I'm totally into right now. Does anyone else have any foods? Popcorn, nuts, ice cream, just too much food, yes. Carbs, definitely, lots of carbs. Trader Joe's, Dunkers, nuts and raisins. Oh, I can't keep up. Baked goods, chocolate, rice pudding, raisins, cranberry. Been making lots of chocolate chip banana bread lately, all of the above, anything and everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? The idea that certain foods, often carbohydrates or sugars or fats, we think will calm our nervous systems during stress. We think they'll comfort and soothe us or at very least distract us. 
but I wonder if you'd be willing to experiment with me if the next time we have a craving instead of reaching for the chips or the nuts or the chocolate or the alcohol or the cakes we actually stopped to breathe and give ourselves a hug like Sam just taught us and listen deeply to our bodies and then ask ourselves what do you really need right now dear body what do you really need now not in a shaming way but coming from real curiosity and then you listen and try to meet that need that hunger that boredom that loneliness or unhappiness rather than feed or numb or suppress it with food or substances and the same goes for our pain. Dialoguing with our pain. What care do we really need to offer that body part in pain right now? Do we need to breathe more deeply and oxygenate that area? Do we need to stop what we're doing and find a different way? Or do we need to be gentler with ourselves and slow down? What messages does our pain bring us? And if we listen deeply and perhaps even meditate, can we get some relief from that pain? Interestingly, an article in Forbes magazine quotes a study on the effectiveness of meditation for pain relief. The Wake Forest Medical Center found about a 40% reduction in pain intensity and a 57% reduction in pain unpleasantness with meditation. Meditation, they say, produces a greater reduction in pain than even morphine or other pain relieving drugs. Can you believe it? Now, I'm not saying that we only need to meditate to reduce our pain. I know that sometimes I sound like a walking advertisement for meditation and mindfulness. And of course, it's not everyone's spiritual practice of choice. But a lot of research shows it can improve our lives in many ways. And so I'm suggesting that most of us could perhaps experiment with listening to our bodies a little bit more than we do. So let's take a moment now to tune into our bodies. Are you game? I'm afraid I haven't been able to keep up with the chat while talking to you at the same time. But are you game now to close your eyes for a moment? And I invite you to notice what you're feeling or sensing right now in your body. What is happening inside right now? What calls for your attention in your body when you listen? Is your stomach rumbling with hunger? Are you holding your breath? Is your head hurting from too much time in front of screens? Or is your back hurting from too much sitting? Or do you have an injury that's calling to you, throbbing in pain? We often say, tell us what's on your mind. Today I'm asking, what's going on inside your body? So let's spend a moment writing some of the sensations that you're feeling into the chat box now, and I'll read them out. I notice I'm holding my breath a little bit. Anxiety. Sadness. Tension, tightness in my solar plexus, headache, lower back tension, hunger, lower back tight, calm, fear, peace and gratitude. Tension and a desire to move. When my wrist hurts, it's usually due to stress, feeling lonely, a tension between laziness and the urge to get out and romp, run and breathe. Less pain and tension than when I'm busily running around. Sad, but don't want this time to end being here together. Neck and upper back pain. Fatigue from too much gardening, so gentle mindfulness to not push. So thank you for sharing 
Well, we have one more here. For pain, avoiding foods that create inflammation makes a difference. Ex exercising every day helps. Taking hot baths and using ointments helps my back. I must do the exercises prescribed by the physical therapist for my neck, back, and knees to be injury-free during long-distance hiking. And finally, tensions between working and giving myself me time. Thank you all for sharing. And now let's close our eyes again and just ask ourselves, like we just heard from Anna E and Spencer, what is the sensation trying to tell me? What message is my body trying to give me right now? And can I be with this? And if you wish to share the messages you are getting, if you feel comfortable, free, feel free to write any insights into the chat box now. Focus on the moment. It wants me to exercise and move more. Me time. Get up and move. It's great, isn't it? When we do virtual worship, we can actually do that. Get up and move in the middle of service. Less screen time and more sunshine. I hear you, Sam. Stretching. Phone time with family members. Stay calm and mindful. Focus on breathing. Pay attention to things around me. How powerful, thank you so much for sharing. Oh, finally, two more, watercolor and poetry and loving mindful balance in all things. That's a beautiful one to stop at. So my friends, I invite us to bring a practice like that of deeper listening to our body and its messages, especially now when we're trying to shore up our immune systems. Each time you feel a sensation, I invite you to get curious about it. No shame, no blame, no reactivity, just listen. Notice what it's trying to tell you. Don't judge it, engage it, get curious. Our bodies speak to us constantly. Our bodies have so much wisdom for us. Our bodies offer us feedback all the time. If we choose to, we can listen and be more attuned to its messages during this pandemic. We can listen so we become more compassionate and honest with ourselves and others. And we can listen to strengthen our health and well being. So now I leave you with the second half of the Felt Sense Prayer, and I will put it on our Facebook page after the service so that you can all read it. So I implore you. I am a messenger with good news, as disturbing as I can be at times. I am wanting to guide you back to those tender places in yourself, the place where you can hold yourself with compassion and honesty. If you look beyond my appearance, you may find that I am a voice from your soul, calling to you from places deep within that seek your conscious alignment. I may ask you to alter your diet, get more sleep, exercise regularly, breathe more consciously. I might encourage you to see a vaster reality and worry less about the day-to-day -day fluctuations of life. I may ask you to explore the bonds and the wounds of your relationships. I may remind you to be more generous and expansive or to attend to protecting your heart from insult. I might have you laugh more, spend more time in nature, eat when you are hungry and less when pained or bored. Spend time every day, if only a few minutes, being still. Wherever I lead you, my hope is that you will realize that success will not be measured by my eradication, but by the shift in the internal landscape from which I emerge. I am your friend, not your enemy. I have no desire to bring pain and suffering into your life. I'm simply tugging at your sleeve, too long immune to gentle nudges. 
I desire for you to allow me to speak to you in a way that enlivens your higher instincts for self-care. My charge is to energize you to listen to me with a sensitive ear and heart of a mother attending to her precious baby. You are a being so vast, so complex, with amazing capacities for self-regulation and healing. Let me be one of the harbingers that lead you to the mysterious core of your being where insight and wisdom are naturally available when called upon with a sincere heart. My friends, may we listen to our bodies, that vast and mysterious core of our being. And by tuning in, may we allow them to guide us through these challenging days and perhaps find a little more ease, comfort, and wellness. May it be so. <laughs>